In this video, we're going to learn about Angular ng messages. ng messages is an external module from the Angular team that allows us to create easy and reusable error messages for people who are using our form so we can display relevant error messages in an easy way. Before we get started, we're actually going to include ng messages itself. So we're going to call this angular messages.js and I'm going to save a file called angular messages. Once you save the file, it should appear in your sidebar. Now we've included it, we need to go and get ng messages. If we go to code.angularjs.org, we can see all the list of previous versions of Angular. So we're going to use the latest, and we're going to use Angular 1.5.6. Inside here, we've got a list of all the Angular core and the different modules. The one that we're going to need is Angular messages, so we're actually going to use angularmessages.js. We can just copy the contents of this file and go back to our editor and paste it. And we can actually look at angular.module and we can go and fetch the module name. And you can see here in angularmessages.js that we're actually creating a module called ng messages. So our application actually needs to include this as a third party module. Once we've saved this out, we can then close both of the tabs. Now that we've got ng messages set up, we're actually going to create some error messages first without ng messages and then put ng messages in to show you how much easier it is. So now what we want to do is actually create some error messages. We'll create a div that's going to hold all of our messages and we'll set one up that says this field is required because this field here is actually required. So we can add some text inside, this field is required and we want to show this when the field is actually invalid. So what we can do is do ng if and then we can reference the form name above which is register. So we can say register dot username which references this field here and we can say when there's an error and when the error is required we want to show this div. So ng if will actually recreate this DOM node when the field is required. Now we don't want to show this at runtime much like the CSS would run at runtime. So what we can actually do is add an ng if up here that says register dot username dot touched. So what this actually means is if the user has actually interacted with the field and there's an error we'll actually show these divs. So in the browser I can focus and blur and it says this field is required, I can type my name in and the errors go away and we see this green box. If we remove this we see the red box and this field is required. Let's go ahead and add another attribute. Let's use ng min length. We can say that the minimum length is going to be 2. Inside the error messages we can clone this and actually change the values inside. So we can then create a property called min length and then we can change the text to say minimum of two characters. Once we go back to the browser, we can actually start typing. If I just type T, we actually get the error message because I've only got one character in the model. We've got the error box because it's invalid and we're using a minimum of two characters. If I then type an O, the error goes away and I could fill out the rest of the name if I wanted to. This is the older way of doing things before ng messages came along. It's good to know how to do it without ng messages in case you don't need to include the entire module for something simple. So let's go ahead and convert this into ng messages. We'll create some divs as a container to hold our messages. We also need this ng if expression because we don't want to show all the errors at runtime. Let's go ahead and paste these in as well and then we'll see how to refactor them to use ng messages. Now this is where things get a lot easier. So what we do is use ng messages and we pass it an expression. So we want to actually pass it this expression here, the error message. This acts like a switch case in JavaScript and will dynamically change all of our errors based on the errors that are actually shown. So what we can actually do is remove both of these to use just the expressions and then we need to actually use ng message. So what this does is pass the error expression into ng messages, then inside that div we have each ng message with a different property. And these properties are just what we'd use here on the end of error for example, and we can also do min length. So this allows us to make our code a lot cleaner. We can go ahead and actually remove the old way of doing things. So we can dive into our form, we can focus on the form, we can blur, and ng messages has said this field is required because we're using the touch property. If I then press T, we then have minimum of two characters, and if I fill out the rest of my name, the whole field becomes valid. Let's go ahead and copy this and move down to the password input. We can then modify this to use password instead. 
The only validation we're doing here is that the input is actually required, so we can actually get rid of this minimum of two characters. If we wanted to make sure that the password matched a particular format, we could actually do something with a regular expression, and we could create a directive, for instance, called password checker. We could then tie this in to ng messages. For this example, we're not going to tie that into ng messages because we're actually going to tie our coupon into ng messages. So we can actually refactor this ng if, which checks if our coupon is valid. We can simply change the username to coupon. We want to make sure that the input is required, and instead of using ng message min length, we can actually replace it with the coupon. We can then copy this text here and replace it above. We can then destroy the old div with the ngif statement and go back to the browser and check it out. In the browser, we can then focus, get an error message, focus, an error message. We can then focus, and because this field's valid, we can actually empty it out and then blur the input. And it says this field is required. If we then type some numbers, it says the coupon is invalid and it must be characters followed by an underscore and two digits. So we'll actually create summer and then 50 again, and that's now a valid field. In the next few videos, we'll dive deeper into ng messages and how we can use some of the more powerful features.